and share my screen and share my desktop. Can you see my desktop? Yes, sir. Yes. Ready? Let's start with the PowerPoint. That don't need that. Okay. All right. So when you blank an image, the number of pixels is reduced. Who knows the answer? Crop. 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 Yep. Crop. You need to change. Oh, I'm sorry. Never mind. Where would you find musical notes to create part of a logo? Custom shape. Very good. In fact, when you click on the custom shape tool, if you go up to the top of the screen, you'll see the options panel and you see a bunch of custom, like a little button here that says custom shapes or shapes. When you click on that, you'll see the musical note right there. Okay. Um, like I said, I, my Photoshop doesn't open to the generic screen anymore uh, where you have all the different choices you can make for pre um, uh, for uh, presets. So what you're going to do is when you'll see the screen and along you'll see a row of tabs that say, you know, for the web, for video, for print, click on the one that says print and then you they want you to create a landscape A4 document. So when you click on the print tab, it'll open up all the presets. And one of the presets will be landscape A4. You click on that one. Oops, sorry. You click on that one. When it opens, you change the resolution. I think it's at 72 to 360 and then save it, name it landscape. That's all you got to do. What three pieces of information must you include in a project goals document? So which of these three have to go to a project goals? Project purpose, project deadline, and target audience. Bingo. Very good. Where do you make non-destructive edits using the eraser tool? No one knows? Remember how we've been, we've been using masks? Okay, it's going to be on the layer mask. So basically, when you do the non, you're going to have a screen in Photoshop, and it's going to make it's going to ask you to click on on a part of the screen on how you make non-destructive edits. And in the layers pane, you'll see the layers mask. You know how how we make the backgrounds disappear when we were doing the projects with uh, Rob Schwartz, like him leaping through the air, and we got rid of the whole classroom behind him. You make non-destructive edits on a layer mask. When you quick export a file, what's the default file type? PNG. Yes, ma'am. That's the default file type. So you're going to match each of these to its definition. Now, generally what I do is I say pick the one that you know and then work your way back. Now, we just finished a whole section on images created by defining points and curves. What are those? All of all of number five, lesson five was about this. OK, those are vector images. Well, that's supposed to be down here. OK, when you create an image stored by when you convert an image stored by geometric formula to pixels, it's rasterizing. When you adjust the number of pixels in an image, it's resampling. And a bitmap is an image created by defining uh, Flip these two. An image created by dots is bitmap. An image created by defining points is vector. How do you add a logo to a project so that if the logo is updated, it will update in Photoshop? Can you place linked? Yes, ma'am. Place linked. You can place it linked or embedded. If you place it linked, you can still work on it outside of Photoshop. What's the benefit of iterative design? Uh, 
It allows the designer to respond to feedback throughout the process. Okay, you have text that has a drop shadow. You want to make the text transparent so you can't see it without without changing the drop shadow. Which cho which choice do you make? See, change the yep. change the change the fill value to zero. Any of the other ones will actually make the um, the whole image uh, transparent. Which two statements describe kerning and tracking? Pick two. So is kerning the space between two lines or kerning is the space between a pair of characters? Which one is it? B. It's B. Kerning is the space between a pair of characters. And C. Is yep. Is tracking the space between a range of characters or is tracking the space between first and second lines? It's C. Tracking is the space between a range of characters. Okay, so this first one has to do with ordering of layers. So you know, like if you're down here in the layers panel, you're, the layer that's on top is the most prominent layer. That's the one you generally see first and then everything down. So you're gonna, you may get a question that says, move this a certain layer, X layer, so that this, the um, text underneath is revealed. It's gonna say basically you drag the layer, you click on it, left click and drag, drag it into the folder and when it, when the text pops up, you know you've got it right. It's changing the layer order. Okay, it's going to ask you to copy part of a logo and to paste it onto a new layer. This is where you'd want to use the magic wand tool, which is underneath what? right here it's under the quick selection tool if you click on that you get quick selection or magic wand you want magic wand for this one so what you want to do like i'm going to copy the black part of the logo so you click on one part of the logo with the magic wand and see how everything is selected then you hold the shift key and click the rest of the black logo then what you do there is hit Control c on your keyboard Control copy Control c Come over here to the layer panel, create a new layer, click on it, and control V, Victor, to paste it. You turn it off. There you go. There's your new layer with your logo on it. So copy with the magic wand, shift, shift click, new layer, copy and paste. You're going to get a question that's going to have a picture and there's going to be a tear on one side. And the question is, um, how do you repair this tear in the picture so it, it looks like it's fixed? So you're going to use the rectangular marquee tool, just like we did in the, um, the lesson, like we were getting rid of this calendar. It's the same thing, except you're just getting rid of a tear on this side. So I'm going to use my rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to draw around. The area I want to fix, edit, I'm sorry, edit, fill, content aware. And that fixes everything out. Anyone have any questions? No, sir. No, sir. Okay, you could get an image like this. And it's going to want you to change. It's going to say, this is a high res image uh, that's done for print. We want to convert it to a different color mode so that we can use it on the internet or on the web. So right now you want to change the color mode. So what you do is you go to image, mode, and which one's the difference? Which one's the color mode for print and which one's the color mode for the web? Which is which? 
RGB is for the web. Yep, and CMYK is for for print. This is this is the colors you use in a printer, a color printer: cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. RGB is for the internet. So you just simply click on RGB. It's going to tell you in the question not to flatten the layers. So don't flatten. And you won't see this as part of the question. This is just popping up. So that's all you need to do. Change the color mode to RGB and don't flatten the layers. In this question, if you get it, you're going to get a question that says, we want to adjust the blending mode of this picture um, so that it, it does a different blending mode and then it's uh, you change the opacity. So once you get the picture up, go over here and make sure the picture is selected in the layers panel. And it tells you change it from normal to screen and then change the opacity to 75%. You can actually just highlight the 100 and type in 75. So change the screen from normal or the, the blending mode from normal to screen and the opacity to 75%. The key here is to make sure you've got that right layer selected. Also, if you have a, if you have a question and you don't see the layers panel or the, the, the thing looks weird, all you have to do is go to window and click on the panel that you want to open. So if the layers panel is not there, just come over here and click on this and click on layers and it'll pop right up. If you don't see the timeline, if you don't see, um, well, you don't need the 3D panel, but just, just that example. So. For this one, you're going to get a question that's going to want you to remove something from a photograph but it's going to be kind of like awkward. It's going to be like kind of like right here where it's tough to draw around or do anything. So you can't really use the marquee tool. What you're going to want to use, of course, is the lasso tool. And remember how we did it before? We drew around what we wanted to get rid of. And can anyone tell me what next? How do we get rid of that guy? Edit, fill, oh, I'm not gonna rasterize this, hang on a second. You won't need to do this in the test. This will already be done for you. Edit, fill, content aware. Okay, in this one, it's gonna want you to copy this flower, just the flower, and paste it on a new layer. In this instance, you're going to want to use not the magic wand tool. You're going to want to use the quick selection tool. And you click on the flower till all the flower is selected like that. Control C for copy. Oops, I hit crop by accident. Sorry. Control C to copy. Open up a new layer. Click on the layer. Control V to paste. Any questions? Okay, whoops. Okay. In this one, it wants you to take the blending modes or the, the special effects here, the layer styles from this image and copy them to this image. So what you do, make sure you're on the layer that you want to copy from, layer, layer style, copy layer style. Then go to the image you want to copy it to, click on that, layer, layer style, paste and now you can see they both have the same layer style i don't even know what this question was 
OK. In this question, it wants you to actually draw a rectangle on the screen and then make some alterations to it. So all you got to do is you go down here to your shape tool. And remember, it's custom shape now, but there's also a rounded rectangle tool. OK, so just draw your rectangle. And you don't really care what you start with because you want to go to the properties panel for your shape, which is here. It's over here, but there's also I've got one here. I've got the properties panel here. I'm going to change the fill to red because that's I think what's what the question wants. It may not be. It may be a different color. But don't worry. Just do what the question tells you. OK, it wants you to add. A stroke. To it and it tells you the color of the stroke. And it tells you how big it wants the stroke, five pixels. And then it wants you to round all the edges to 10 pixels. And this one is already done because I've, I've already played with this question before. And that's it. You got to draw a rectangle and modify the properties. Okay, you're going to get a question that says, without deleting um, or, or changing the opacity of a layer, hide all these layers so that only the text layer, to, which is with the T, are visible. How do I hide everything but still leave these two layers visible? Come on, guys, you got to help me out with some answers. You press the I. Yes, ma'am. Boom. Boom. They're both hidden except for the text layers. Very good. This might be just the same question twice. Oh, no. Um, it wants you to export a file and turn on the copyright um, uh, the the copyright protection not the copyright protection but the copyright uh, save the copyright info to the layer so all you do is go to file export export as and when the dialog box pops up click here under metadata copyright and contact info And if it wants you to export it, we'll tell you to export it. If it doesn't, don't bother. That's all you got to do. OK, here's another one where it wants you to manipulate this text and change it. So first thing you do is make sure you're on the text layer. All right, and then it's going to want you and see I've got my properties panel here. Your properties panel could also be here where you click on it and open it up like that. But my property panel here, it wants you to change the font. So I'm gonna change the font from Book Antigua to Cambria. It'll tell you what font to change it to. It wants you to change the size of the font. I'll change that to 30. It wants you to change the current, um, the spacing between the letters which I, is the tracking or kerning? It's the tracking. So what you'll do, and that's the little, the VA with the white around it right here. And I want you to change that to 75. And then it wants you to save it as all, um, uh, what you call it, all small caps. So if you scroll down, you'll find it. Type options and small caps is the big T and little T. That's it, you're just manipulating this text. And that one we did already. That's it, guys. You are as ready to take the test as anyone else that's been working in Photoshop. Anyone have any final questions? It's 3.55. There, there are 40 questions on the test, and you have 50 minutes.
Anyone else? Okay, guys, please uh, remember to wait until four o'clock before logging in. And if it doesn't log in right away, give him a second. He might have to be having trouble logging in, but you'll be okay. Um, I hope you all got something out of this review and good luck. I hope to see a bunch of passing scores.